who is Bobby Ring? Everybody knows Bobby Ring. He's New Jersey in pants. Didn't he play that role in that movie? Bobby Ring. We are twins, you know, we were separated at birth. If I could describe Bobby Ring in one word, it would be big. Once upon a time, though, Bobby Ring wore a cowboy hat. Bobby Bing? Better known as Jersey's version of pork roll, egg, and cheese. Bada Bing. I'm Bobby Ring. I'm Bobby Ring. I'm Bobby Ring. I'm Bobby Ring. Yo, I'm Bobby Ring. I'm Bobby Ring. I'm Bobby Ring from Piscataway, New Jersey. But the question remains, who is Bobby Ring? You know, if you've seen Bobby Ring, you know that there's no few words to describe that gentleman. Caring, friendly, outgoing. Bobby just it exudes passion. Bobby is a great leader. He is a great humanitarian, a great uh, gentleman. He's a great ambassador for the industry. Everybody knows Bobby, everybody loves Bobby. He's very well spoken and uh, very articulate, very committed to getting our view out there. Bobby is a big, boisterous personality, but at heart, he's a sweetheart. He's just a big old teddy bear. You cannot keep but loving a big old teddy bear. Bobby is an avid hiker, as his dad was. Bobby was an Eagle Scout, but when he does things, he does it with the full vigor and drive that you would expect somebody that's in a leadership position. His dad took him to ACCA events you know, when he was just a young child, so Bobby really grew up in the industry. And he is such a great family man and a community man. He does so many things in his community. Uh, his family is enormous. I've had great opportunities to visit with them. He's probably the biggest Rutgers fan you ever met in your life. Is you go to a Rutgers game and Bobby takes up practically the whole parking lot at the, at the stadium. He's got this black van that he travels all over the country with following Rutgers football and he sets up and he tries to feed pork roll, egg and cheese to America. For a Rutgers fan, he, he has a fairly sensible outlook on life. He's a, an individual whose heart is as big as he is. He's a genuine individual. I don't know if there's anybody out there that's more genuine than he is. I'm really looking forward to his, uh, this, this year coming up with Bobby at the helm. He will be an amazing leader. Um, he will take us to the next level and he will do it with elegance and grace. Hey Bobby, what's the best part of being ACCA chairman? You know, there, there's plenty, plenty of downtime. You have a few drinks here and there. How many drinks have you had this morning? I don't know, 10 or 15, lost track. Describe your sense of style and fashion as chairman. It's very, very exciting. It's very now. What are your big ideas for 2013, Bobby? What message will you bring to Congress on behalf of ACCA? Red Solo Cup is the best receptacle for barbecues, tailgates, fairs, and festivals. How long do you expect to be ACCA chairman? About two and a half minutes. <laughs> But I can't think of anybody better to lead that charge than Bobby Ring. Um, he just got all the necessary tools and ingredients to be the industry leader at the right time. And we're looking forward to having a fantastic year this year. Be yourself. Enjoy your year as chairman. It will go by so fast. Enjoy the ride. It's going to be a great year for you. Bobby, congratulations on being anointed the ACCA chairman for 2013. There will be no Red Solo Cup uh, renditions uh, for you here live. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of ACCA, Bobby Ring. Thank you, thank you. It's amazing what Kevin can do with a little bit of money. <laughs> Good evening, and yes, I am Bobby Ring. Now, many of you know me as the guy who hosted I've Got an Idea for many years, handing out cash and cracking jokes. Some of you know me as the uh, accidental entertainment at the uh, last few ACCA PAC fundraisers, <laughs> including last night, and it's great that video gets developed so quickly. 
or may, maybe you know me as the big guy who twisted your arm to buy a pack raffle ticket. That's not allowed. We're not to, uh, allowed to coerce you in any way. Some of you may know me from the, uh, the great work I did this past summer on the Today Show, promoting our industry. Yeah. And some of you just know me as the uh, loudmouth from New Jersey. Well, I guess I am that Bobby Ring, too. But I am willing to bet there's a lot more about me that you don't know. And I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes with you tonight telling my, uh, sharing my story with you, because while I'm honored and humbled to be named chairman of this terrific organization, I think that you and I have a lot more in common than you might think. But first, I have to ask for another round of applause for Laura DeFilippo and the fantastic she job she did this year as our outgoing chairman. Laura did indeed do a fantastic job this year leading our organization. And very few people have committed as much time and hard work and smarts to the industry as Laura has. I've known her for a long time, but uh, we really became close this past year. And I can't thank her, for, thank her enough for her help in preparing me for my role here as your chairman this year. Now, earlier I said we have a lot in common, all of us contractors in the audience, uh, because I believe that tru truly, no matter what differences we may have, we do have a lot in common. Maybe you're a commercial contractor, and I'm a residential contractor. Maybe you're a really big contractor or a really small contractor, and I'm somewhere in between. We're talking about company size here. <laughs> My father always said we're the biggest contractors in New Jersey, so. Maybe you're a Democrat, and I am definitely a Republican. Thank you. Maybe you're from Texas, yeah. and I'm from Jersey. Yeah. Those differences don't really matter. Some people in my, in, in my state might say, from the great state of New Jersey, would say, yeah, forget about it. <laughs> but here's what I believe we do have in common. We love our families, and we do what we do because we want to support our families to the best of our abilities. We love our communities and do everything we can to make them better places to live. And we love being contractors, even on those days when maybe we don't love it all that much. <laughs> or when Jerry Bosworth goes, goes away from his business, he seems to love it the most. <laughs> Is that Jerry or Larry? I can't remember. <laughs> I know we have these things in common, because every time I come to an ACCA meeting, I meet new people. People who might see things differently from me. Is there anyone ever disagreed with me? Pam, is that true? Anyone disagreed with me? But we connect over the things we have in common. And the things that we view differently, well, those are the things that, that's where the learning comes from. So first things first, I'm not the first Bob Ring to work in the HVACR industry. I'm not even the biggest Bob Ring to ever work in the HVACR industry. For years, my dad, who was a full two inches taller than me, introduced himself at these meetings as the original Bob Ring. My dad was born in Minnesota, and he met my mom at a dance when he was stationed in the Army at Fort Monmouth in New Jersey. Get this. Mom, had, mom went to the dance on a bus trip from the local YMCA. In order to get there, she had to have a note from her parish priest attesting to her moral character. <laughs> Maybe it was that good moral character, Mom, that caught Dad's eye. I was born in January 1961, on the day after my parents' first wedding anniversary. And my sister Kathleen was born in December of the same year. We were what you call Irish twins. And throughout school, we were in the same grade together. About three weeks after I was born in January 61, my dad started working for two guys named Bob Meyer and Jim DePew. I grew up in this business as my dad grew his career. When he was the service manager on evenings and weekends, the answering service sent the calls to customers directly to our house. There were no cell phones, no text messages, no emails. We didn't even have beepers back then. Mom worked as a nurse in the emergency room in a local hospital on weekends. So if all the other techs were busy, Dad piled all of us kids in the car, actually into the van. There were four of us. He'd take us out on the service call. I remember my sister Kathleen and I used to fight over who got to seat, sit over the wheel well in the back of the van. We called it the hump. It was far cooler sitting on that wheel well than it was sitting up front with Dad. <laughs> no car seats, no booster seats, not even seat belts back then. You'd probably get arrested if you carted your kids around like that today. 
On Saturday mornings, I hung out with my dad at the shop. He was usually there to get caught up on invoices. This was long before computers, I assure you. I'd get to sit at one of the desks and play with all the office equipment. Play with the adding machine. Who remembers the adding machine where you went <laughs> Anyone remember one of those? They were called adding machines because they didn't subtract, multiply, or divide. <clears throat> we really didn't have calculators back then. I have a lot of fun memories of time spent with my dad in that shop. It's where I first learned about how the air conditioning business works. But it wasn't all business. The shop was also a great place to uh, gut the occasional deer. <laughs> See, Dad had bought a shotgun back in 1956, just after his 18th birthday at Sears and Roebuck in Fairmont, Minnesota. Recently found the receipt for that, handwritten. $48 plus 33 cents shipping. That was a lot of money in 1956. Sometimes he would take me to his gun club for the weekend. We'd go up on Friday nights, and we'd sleep in a sparse hunting cabin with some of his buddies. I probably fell asleep pretty early. I can only imagine what happened after that. First thing in the morning, we'd release, we'd release a bunch of pheasants and then have breakfast. And I clearly remember this as being the first time I ever had spam. Spam is a distant cousin to New Jersey's pork roll, for those of you who aren't familiar. <clears throat> After breakfast, we'd go pheasant hunting, where my job was to stay behind my father so he didn't do a Dick Cheney on me. <clears throat> Today, my son Tom and I still shoot sporting clays with my dad's 57-year-old shotgun. As soon as I was old enough, mom and dad, wanting to find some purpose to my life, signed me up for, for the Cub Scouts. Dad became very active in scouts and served as an assistant scout master and led us on several backpacking trips. This photo of the two of us was taken in 1978 on top of Mount Marcy, the highest mountain in New York. I was just 17 and Dad was uh, only 49. For a moment, we were the two tallest things in all of New York. <laughs> Five years ago, my dad and I repeated our trek along with my son Tom so we could be the three tallest things in New York. And my experience in scouting had a tremendous impact on my life, really, if you think about what the scouting principles are. It taught me about what real leadership is. First as a patrol leader and later as a junior assistant scoutmaster, I learned the importance of things like never ask someone to do something I wouldn't do myself, and always speak to others in the same way I'd like them to speak to me. With my parents' support and in competition with several of my friends, I became an Eagle Scout in 1978. I'm just wondering how many uh, Eagle Scouts are, thank you. Just wondering, show of hands, how many Eagle Scouts are here tonight? Raise your hands nice and high. That's fantastic. Great, guys. <clears throat> For some reason, people are surprised to learn this about me. They say, you were an Eagle Scout? I politely correct them. What do I tell them? I am an Eagle Scout. One of my fellow Eagle Scouts and I co-chair an annual golf outing for our local Boy Scout Council. We helped them raise money to send disadvantaged scouts from urban areas to summer camp. Another fellow Eagle Scout continues to be my closest friend. He's here tonight, but I'll talk about him more later, right after he puts his iPhone away. <laughs> <coughs> See, Ron, I'm up here now, and I get to do all the jokes. I told you about my Irish twin sister, Kathleen. We were inseparable when we were youngsters, and we stayed close as we grew older. When we were in high school, Kathleen was diagnosed with lupus, a disease that ended up destroying her kidneys. So she ended up needing a kidney transplant, and genetic testing showed that she and I were a perfect match, probably because we were only born 11 months apart. So in 1984, we went to Cornell Medical Center in New York City, where doctors transplanted my left kidney into my sister. Don't look too bad for that. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kathleen went on later to receive two more kidney transplants, receiving one from a cadaver and one from our brother, Tim. Kathleen lost her struggle in 1999, passing away at the way too young age of 38, leaving behind her then four-year-old son, Matthew, and her husband, Joe. I'm proud to say that Matthew has recently joined the club and will receive the Eagle Scout Award next Sunday back in New Jersey. Thank you. I attended William Patterson College in New Jersey, where I met someone that would change my life in ways that I could have only, only have imagined. 
I was working in the campus bar. Yes, the drinking age back then was only 18. How many remember that? <laughs> back then, at the age of 18 in that campus bar, I met Pam Jacobsack. And uh, this September, we'll celebrate our 30th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Pam and I have been through a lot together. Before our first wedding anniversary, her mother was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Surgery to remove the tumor left her paralyzed on one side of her body. She was released from the hospital on the very same day that I was going into the hospital to donate my kidney to my sister. So imagine my wife having her mom coming out of the hospital in that condition and her newlywed husband going into the hospital to donate body parts to somebody else. It was a tough time. Pam's mom fought a long and courageous battle but passed away a year and a half later. Our love for each other is perhaps best symbolized by the two beautiful children that we've raised together. Our daughter Jennifer, also on our iPhone. <coughs> and our son Thomas, also on his iPhone. I'm proud to say both of them are here with us tonight. Thanks, guys. I think they're actually taking pictures. That'll be the story I get later anyway. I'm on their iPhones, yeah. As our children grew up and Pam returned to the workforce, she came to work at Meyer and Depew where she handles payroll and accounts payable. But make no mistake, I might own the stock in the company, but she is the boss. <laughs> Pam, you know I love you more now than when I met you. Thank you for supporting me in everything that I've done and sharing all the great times together. And thank you too for being there for the tough times. Stand up so everyone can see how beautiful you are. Thank you. <laughs> love you. This is where I do my Marco Rubio impersonation. <laughs> in addition to my dad's interest in hunting and sports and leadership and scouting, I also got interested in volunteer firefighting. How many of you are volunteer firefighters? Anybody? I know Vince is very active in that. Couple. Good, good. Dad told us all from an early age that giving back to the community was a very important thing. He joined the local fire department back in 1964. Mom joined the ladies auxiliary and it quickly became a central part of our family life. When I was old enough, I'd, I'd ride my bike to the firehouse. It was uphill both ways. <laughs> and whenever there was a fire call, I'd go up there and I'd sweep the garage out while the firemen were out at the fire call and help them wash the truck when they got back. And through the fire department, I became friends with Ron Kennedy who's now off his iPhone, great. Ron's father, uh, Jim, was the fire chief back then. Ron and I lived across the town from each other, and we uh, competed to see who could become Eagle Scout first. I can't remember, but I think he might have beat me by a few months, but if, uh, if he did, it was pretty close, as I recall. Ron was best man in my wedding, and I was best man in his. His bachelor party will be forever etched in my memory. <laughs> and that's the only place it can see, be seen, because we made sure there's no photos. Ron and I have kind of shadowed each other. He became chief of the Martinsville Volunteer Fire Department when he was just 25 years old. It's pretty cool at 25, you're riding around town in a car that most people thought was a police car. You got away with a lot of stuff. <laughs> Ron went to engineering school and now owns his own successful business. And he are kind of like a two-man mix group. Whenever we get together with Ron and his wife Sue for dinner, talk soon turns to business and we give each other advice. Thanks Ron and Sue for being such great friends and for being here tonight as well. How are we doing out there, good? Good, good. good. It's only another half hour, I promise. <laughs> my father had taught me the importance of community service, so I became chief of my volunteer fire department, but not until the age of 35. See, Pam and I moved around three times, and it takes time to climb the ranks. You just don't move into town and say, I want to be chief. You have to work on that. I was also later elected, to, uh, elected as fire commissioner and was re-elected to a second term before I realized that the time that I spent uh, in politics would be paying better dividends if I spend it in my business. You see, during all this time of growing my family and contributing to my community, I was also growing my heating and air conditioning contracting business. I'd gone to work for my father in 1981, just two years after he and his partner bought the business from Bob Meyer. In April of that year, my dad took me to my very first ACCA North Jersey chapter meeting, coming up on 33 years ago. I guess I am old. 
He taught me from the beginning how valuable it is to network with other contractors and suppliers. 13 years later, though, I left the contracting business and went to work for Dick Foster and became national sales manager for Troll Attempt. Over the next four years, I traveled over 100 nights a year and was in and out of hundreds of contracting businesses. What an amazing learning experience it was. Thank you, Dick, for that opportunity. <clears throat> I learned a lot about our industry, a lot about things that we didn't do at Meyer and Depew. It was kind of like a free college program, and Dick paid me to do it. It was great. <laughs> in 1998, however, my father called me up, said he was buying out his partner, and asked if I wanted to be his new partner. What an honor to be even asked. The man who had taught me so much reached out to me to ask for my help in taking his business to the next level. It was a year later that my sister passed away. It changed my parents forever. You're not supposed to bury your children, they're supposed to bury you. So mom and dad changed their outlook on life and decided it was too short, and they wanted to spend time doing things they always wanted to do. And I felt it was my responsibility as my father's partner, and even more so as his son, to make sure they got the opportunity to enjoy their later years. Dad began spending less time at work, more time in the Adirondacks, or traveling in the, throughout the country in their motorhome. In 2006, Dad fully retired, and I began buying him out. He and Mom continued to enjoy traveling and spending their winters here in Florida. Now, I have to tell you, my mom is an incredibly strong woman, and she and Dad brought us up to be independent and responsible. We were also taught to stand up for what we believe in. And that's why I've always had such a great passion about the business of government. Mom encouraged me to write to President Nixon when I was a kid. And she herself was active in local politics, not as an elected official, but as a citizen activist that opposed the siting of a landfill near our home. I believe strongly that we as business people must work together to influence all levels of government. We can't let politicians forget that small business people are the, this country's economic engine. We should not be embarrassed about being successful business owners. It's something that should be celebrated and nurtured by both political parties. <clears throat> and my goal as chairman of ACCA is to take this message wherever it needs to be heard. ACCA members are proud to be contracting business owners. We provide good jobs at great wages and feed untold families by taking risks and building businesses. We are successful because of our commitment and our work ethic, and we should never need to apologize for that. I learned a lot from my dad, but I got my politics gene from my mom. I'm thrilled that mom is here tonight. Mom, give us a wave. <clears throat> and like a lot of people who stood up here before me, including Laura just a few minutes ago, the single biggest benefit that I've received from ACCA is being part of our mixed group. And I've been extremely fortunate to be a member of not just any mixed group, but the Eagle's Nest mixed group, the best and most successful ACCA mixed group ever. Yeah. All right, well, maybe I'm a little biased because I didn't hear anyone from Texas cheering on, on but. Larry, where are you? Lawrence? <laughs> I learned I don't want to hitch up to a wagon going downhill, Larry, so I joined this group. But I really do an awful, owe an awful lot to all the members of our group. Our company would not be anywhere near as successful as it is if it weren't for the advice and counsel of some very wise businessmen. And I'm proud to point out, too, that I am the third member of the Eagle's Nest Mix Group to serve as ACCA chairman. Top that, Larry Taylor. <laughs> While all of my mixed group members are, are, have helped me tremendously, one in particular stands out. When faced with a tough situation in your company, you may refer to the words of Zig Ziglar or Tony Robbins. I prefer to say, what would Ray do? <laughs> of course, I'm talking about my twin brother, Ray Isaac. <clears throat> Ray and I have known each other longer than anyone else in the Eagle's Nest, and I've actually been, uh, we've actually been members of two mixed groups together. We got to know each other really well about almost 20 years ago, we were stranded in Texas, of all places, at an ACCA conference because our nor'easter had closed the airports at home. I had the pleasure of spending the entire day at the zoo with Ray 
and all of his family. I think there were like 20-something people named Isaac there. <laughs> it really just goes to show you never know who you're going to meet at an ACCA conference or what impact it's going to have on your life. When I grow up, I want to be like Ray. Ray, thanks for being such a great friend. I really appreciate you. And thanks to the advice and friendship of so many great ACCA members and the leadership lessons taught by my father, today Myron DePew employs more than 50 professionals. And it's really comforting to know that we have such a terrific team back at the office keeping our clients comfortable whenever I'm away on business. Two of our team members are here with me tonight. I hired Dana Mortensen when she was 18 and I was 24. Today she's our general manager. And my father hired John Steiner straight out of vocational school when he was 19. Today, he's our service manager. I want to thank them both for being here tonight and for being such extraordinary examples for our team. There's another group that, uh, in my opinion, doesn't get the recognition that they deserve, but they've played a key role in my company's success and in yours. They are the ACCA national staff. They put this together and make it look easy, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I remember the first time I went to the ACC office in D.C., I said, where's the rest of them? I didn't understand. I still can't believe that such a small team of talented people is able to put together and do so much as it does for our industry. Will those staff who are here tonight please stand and be recognized? We all thank you very much, and I thank you personally and very sincerely from the bottom of my heart for all that you do for us. As you can see, like the rest of you, I'm a product of my environment. I'm a product of the conscious decision my parents made to raise me as an independent and outspoken thinker. A product of the great institution known as the Boy Scouts of America, which taught me leadership and integrity. A product of a community that puts people in service first. We're in New Jersey. Over 90% of our communities are served by 100% volunteer fire departments, where I learned about giving back. And I'm a product of the love and support I received from my family, which has made it possible for me to be here. And I'm a product of ACCA. For over 30 years, ACCA has been so much more to me than a place to send dues checks, get a newsletter, or get one of Kevin's emails. ACCA is a community of its own, a community of professional contractors who believe that real success comes from operating with integrity. Through ACCA National, my local chapter, my mixed group and others, I stand here tonight because ACCA has done so much for me and my business that I have no choice but to pay it back with service. So my commitment to you in the next 12 months is that ACCA will continue to speak for all contractors, that we will find the common ground that unites all of us and use that to drive us all forward. The things we have in common are so much more powerful than the things that we disagree over. And if we stick together, I believe contractors through ACCA can be an awe-inspiring force for change, for real change. Most of all, as I stand here before you tonight, I'm a product of my mentor, my personal leader, my namesake, my father, the original Bob Ring. On May 20th, 2011, Dad was diagnosed with colon cancer. On June 14th, he was told he had two years to live. I remember the ride home from Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital in Manhattan after hearing that news, telling him I expected him to be here tonight to see me installed as ACCA chairman. Unfortunately, he passed away only two weeks later. It was a surprising blow, one that my family and I are still dealing with. You might not see him here tonight, but I know Dad's here, and hope I've made him proud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Bobby, before you sit down, we, uh, your mixed group, I'll give everybody a chance to collect themselves, including myself. So wherever uh, the Eagles Nest mixed group, come on up. We don't need to get on stage. Well, I might have to so you can see me. But uh, Ray's getting preemptive with that now. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, that's why I, here, hang on a second. Come here, Bobby. Yeah, let's just do the old skit. All right, all right. There, now I feel comfortable. All right, kiddo. Love you, buddy. Me too. It's kind of funny. Bobby came over to my house a few years ago, and he's walking around. My wife, Erica, says, Bobby, what are you looking at? And he says, you need to dust the top of your cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, we can't see the top of our cabinets. <laughs> so she handed him a dust cloth. But um, as you know, Bobby does have a little bit of an identity crisis. Uh, he wants people to know that he is from New Jersey, where they do have pork roll. It is a suburb of New York. So, oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. And his uh, fellow mixed group members and I uh, definitely wanted to give him something to wear while he was out uh, representing ACCA in a very fine fashion, which I'm positive he'll do. And uh, we love you like a brother, and we're very proud of you. Thank you. But uh, as you saw in the pictures, um, he does like Rutgers University. So we got a little tip that, uh, that a, a, a nice way of... Uh, of representing New Jersey would be to really represent them with the only sports team they have in New Jersey, which is Rutgers University. Even though he is a Yankees fan, that is, that's the New York Yankees. You, you do understand. And the New York Giants, too. Paul and uh, Bobby, that's the New York Giants. New Paul, York. Paul, have you noticed where the Giants play? New York threw them out. We took them in, right? Yeah. And we, we were gracious enough to take the Jets, too. So They needed cheap real estate. Um, you know, landfills are real easy to play on, so we don't have any of those in New York. It should be New York because it's all of our stuff we sent you years ago. We have a bill for the Super Bowl for next year for you then. Okay. But with that, we, did, uh, we found an individual in New York. Uh, he, he makes tents, but he also makes jackets. So I was, in, uh, I was in Key West. I was in Key West last week, and I was waiting patiently for this to arrive at my house. But they said they had to kill a few more cows and, and shear a few more sheep to do it. 3XL tall is not easy, Bobby, yeah. to find. But uh, they have to have them custom made. But what we did, here, you can, yeah, here you go, guys. You can pull it out. But we, uh, we got Bobby a little keepsake, uh, a nice jacket to represent his home state in New Jersey. Yeah. And it's a, uh, a Rutgers uh, stadium jacket. Wow. I'm not going to ask you to try it on, but... Uh, Thank you, Ray. You're welcome. So we're very proud of you, and we hope you to wear it proudly. And I will. And represent ACCA and New Jersey, in which you will to the best of your ability. Ray, thank so you so much. Thank you, all of you. I really do appreciate it. Mark, thank you. Appreciate it. Tommy, thank you.